Hi, I'm Joshua Williams, director and writer of Letters to Freedom. Letters to Freedom is a Civil War era film, a historical drama about unconditional love and self-sacrifice. You have these two characters who get caught in a love story that wasn't supposed to happen. Julie, who's a Southern white girl, falls in love with a former slave of her father's and uh, he escapes and joins the Union Army to fight for his freedom and the freedom of others. And in these trying times, they both are forced to make decisions to test who they really are and to test their love for each other and to really know and understand what unconditional genuine love means in the midst of persecution. I came up with the idea for this film seven years ago. At at that time, I was in search of what love really was, what genuine, true love really was. In the midst of come home, in the midst of this search, reading the Bible, reading stories of people's um, testimonies of their life decisions, I I came up. I thought about this idea of what it looked like to be in a situation where that genuine love is tested. And I, I started doing research on history and interracial couples, and I was intrigued by a lot of the stories I was, I was coming across and how people were willing just to sacrifice and follow their con convictions and do what's right in the midst of persecution, you know, and not being afraid to stand on what they believe is right, you know. And, and in a lot of ways, it does remind me of the story on the cross, what Jesus did, you know, he, he could have backed down and given up at any time, but his love was greater. So he suffered and died for the sake of the world uh, to be saved. So I believe this story needed to be told for that very reason. I think the world is missing that right now. I think in our society today, we're missing genuine love. Love is taught to be self self-centered love is taught to be self-pleasing and self-seeking but not often do you hear love being spoken or taught to be selfless to die to yourself to put others before yourself uh to suffer for what's right and to suffer for what what's true so that's why i believe this film should be told i believe it's a good inspirational story to help encourage and inspire many people who watch it Oh man, this was a tough film to make because it just was something that was outside of my scope and time period. I knew if I was going to make this film, I had to face it head on and just go for it and not overthink anything. You know, I had to just go for it and try to execute it, even not having a budget. So the biggest challenge was just trying to find the visual elements and trying to create a story in a film that felt authentic and real with those limitations. Another big challenge when making this was just being able to take care of everybody who helped out. You know, I. I wanted to take care of everyone as much as I could and, and, to, and to support everyone who was supporting the production. So yeah, another production challenge we had was filming. Uh, we filmed at the Colonial Pennsylvania Plantation and we experienced what it was like to not be surrounded by technology other than the film equipment we had on set. Um, that was basically really the only technology we had, but because the, the place we filmed that was so historically preserved, there was no heater. I mean, there was no, yeah, there was no heaters. There was no air conditioning. There was no bathroom. Rooms. We had to work within the weather. We had extremely hot days that were tough, and we had uh, cold days, and then we had to go up the hill to use the bathroom as a crew. So stuff like that was challenging, but everyone on set who worked on this film was troopers, and they really put in work and sacrifice, and they I couldn't have done it without anybody who helped out on set. Everyone who, who was a part of it really, really was willing to put in the work and the challenge along with me and believe in the project, and I thought that was just an honor. The fact that everyone was just willing to believe in the vision and the story that we were making and give their all. Again, that was just, I couldn't have asked for a better cast and crew to work with. I tried to do it, be as historically accurate as I could. That was something that I, I was super passionate about. I, I wanted to make sure the film was as historically accurate as possible. Of course, again, there were limitations because of the budget, but again, I don't like using budget and lack of resources as, as an excuse. Like I want to make it as accurate as possible. The costumes, I did a lot of research on the costumes. Karina, who played Julie, she did an amazing job doing her own research for the character. You know, for the soldiers, I, I looked online, I went 
to military uh, military stores to find the um, the blue Union coats. I went to Gettysburg shops a lot in Pennsylvania to, to find a lot of the Civil War era kind of um, props and costumes. And some of it was also makeshifts. Some things we had to just we couldn't we didn't have the budget for, so we had to find a way to replicate it as much as we can with what we had, and that was kind of how we did a lot of the uh, the costumes. As far as setting goes, we filmed at this uh, this local plantation called Colonial Pennsylvania Plantation. It's in uh, Newtown Square area in Pennsylvania, not too far from Philadelphia. And that was one of the places I uh, written to to get permission to film there. And they were phenomenal to work with. The um, the plantation was massive amount of land and acres. And the uh, just the house that we were able to shoot in, everything was just set. There was nothing in a house that was, wasn't historically accurate. Everything was preserved from the 1700s, which was pretty amazing. When looking for a lot of settings like historical places, I think a huge element was trying to find the artistry in these places. How can we make these, although they're historically, I want to make them as, as, as historically accurate as possible. I mean, how can we make these settings like art pieces, make them look visually pleasing and entertaining and like just eye popping. Uh, some of the places I look for, like we filmed in Roland Park. Uh, one of the uh, final scenes we filmed in the woods was Roland Park. I chose that park particularly because the trees were, it was such a clean park. I never seen a woods area where the woods was just so clean. The trees were, um, was perfectly aligned. Like it almost looked like the park was just handmade. That's how nice it was. And I knew immediately that was the place I wanted to film that scene at the end. It was just such a beautiful park. And, and the way the sun just cut through the trees, it was amazing. And I still refer that park to um, a lot of people. So dialogue was important. Uh, as a filmmaker and storyteller, you always want to be as accurate as possible when it comes to dialect and accents. Karina, she worked hard to uh, really nail down her Southern accent for Julie. Again, she prepped and did all she can for the role of Julie, which I am extremely grateful for. Bang, who played the father, he already had such a good naturally Southern accent, which was pretty great. One of the biggest learning curves that I um, I encountered while working on a feature film versus a short film was that I can't do everything on my own. <laughs> I know as filmmakers, we tend to do that a lot. When we're passionate, we tend, to, we tend to think and believe that we can handle everything on our own. My short films were such smaller scale. So in a lot of ways, I was able to do a lot of the behind the scenes work and editing and all of that on my own and get the job done. Like before this one, I made a, a, a 10 minute 9-11 film and this was my first time really needing help. I had an AD for the first time. I was able to have people focus on just lighting and helping out on set, even catering, you know? And so it, it was a lot that I had to learn and realize I had to learn how to let go, receive the help that I was getting. Because again, when, when you, all you know is short films on your own, when you come across a film like this, a project like this, you realize this is much bigger than what you thought and it can be done on your own. Yeah, I think that was probably the biggest learning curve was it's important to have a team and to have help and, and to not try to handle everything all on your own. Also, I realized I was working with a larger cast compared to a short film, which was a lot of fun actually. It was a learning curve, but I had a blast because I love being able to just work with the cast and and, and direct them and build this, this this scene, this experience with their performances. Being able to see what they bring to the uh, characters and to, to the scene as well, I love being able to do that. Like I love being able to just step away from the camera, step away from the equipment and just be in tune with the, with the actors and the performers and just being able to work to build these moments and scenes and these emotional beats and these just, just just build a masterpiece as much as you can being that it was a bigger cast i never got bored i never got bored ever on set i was always excited to be able to to work with everybody i was excited to start creating a new scene even if we didn't 100 percent know what that scene looked like just being able to to get to come together and start building it from the ground up. And when you finally see what that scene looks like after all the work and contribution that was added to it with, between the casts and crew, you realize, yeah, this was worth it. This all was worth it. And it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a whole lot of fun. I really enjoyed just finding the accuracy and also just the artistry visually and making letters to freedom. 
One of the things I, I, I felt was important was when I was writing this story, I wanted the audience to, to feel like they were a part of this adventure with Julie. You know, it, it wasn't just a love story, it was an experience. It was going through Julie's life choices and her journey and what is Julie gonna do next? She was almost unpredictable character. Um, and I and I liked that because I felt like that would help give the audience a sense of going on a ride with these characters and with her. You never really knew what, what she was gonna do next. She, you knew that she felt strongly about what she believed. And when I wrote each character, I wanted each character to have a motivation, a want, and, and a desire. And Julie had a strong desire. Seth had a strong desire. Gabriel, who, who was the antagonist, had a strong desire. Joseph had a strong desire. Everyone, I wanted everyone to have just one goal that they focused on. And how did all of these different goals and visions and ideas intertwine and create this conflict that tied, that centered around Julie and Seth. So when I wrote Gabriel as the villain, I didn't want him to come across as a villain. Typically, one thing I realized when you know somebody who disagrees with you or who has a different viewpoint, most people don't see themselves as villains and sometimes they aren't. It's just, this is how they see things and they believe that they're right and they're following their convictions in this area and believe that, that they're doing what's right. And then you have the other side who feels the same way. I'm following my convictions. I believe this is right and I wanna help. And I, I wanna help people and do what's right. So when these two ideas of people who don't see themselves as villains but as good people clash what does that look like and when people are forced to break under pressure what does that look like and that was something i really wanted to do with gabriel's character i wanted him to have a genuine heart for julie he he genuinely loved julie and wanted to be with her and when he was rejected multiple times i wanted to show what would it take for a man to break and to lose his sanity you know and, and i think that's something relatable because a lot of us have experienced that level of rejection to a certain extent uh so it was something that one wasn't hard to write, but tapping into the dark side of oneself and writing, I think was important with that role. I wanted to write the love story in a way where following after trends and what's popular is not always the way to go in life. Uh, typically it's important to follow your convictions uh, because society changes. Uh, there, There's always different viewpoints. There are always different, you know, people are following after each other to be accepted and not so much doing what's right. And I wanted to show that Julie and Seth weren't following after their society wasn't followed after what was trendy. They were following their hearts and knew that putting this individual person first, who has a heart, who has a soul, and who who's worthy to be loved like Christ loves us, that was something that I wanted the characters to see that that was more important. And I wanted the audience to see that as well. Like to love someone, to put give your all to this one person is worth universe, you know? And that's what Christ did for each and every one of us, you know? So what's funny is this film actually wasn't, when I first wrote this film, it wasn't really originally a feature film. Even when I was on set I thought I was making a short film but I remember when I was working on set Kelly who helped me on set she made a comment when I told her that this film is actually a feature film it's, it's not 30 minute short film she told me um while all the work we were doing on set she automatically knew right there that this wasn't a short film that it was a feature film we were making and I and I just thought that was funny that she picked up on it early on and I'm just like oh no I can't handle feature films I can only handle short films so this is all this is going to be a short film and then as soon as I get into post work I really Realize, yeah, this is well past 30 minutes, but I, the story was so entwined that I, I was not going to cut it, cut back and make it a short film. So I, I actually was surprised that we were able to accomplish a feature film, and I'm grateful for how it turned out um, for what we were able to do. World War II, the 1940s. I've been dying. I've had a huge desire to make a D-Day film. Um, there's something about the stories in D-Day that I think are very powerful. Storming the beaches of Normandy, going to the front doors, heading to the front doors of Nazi German territory to rid uh, France of Nazi control and also to free the Jews who are in captivity and being tortured by Nazis. There was just something human humane and inspirational about that story. And there's so much about, there's so many stories that happen on D-Day on the beaches alone that a lot of Hollywood and a lot of people didn't really tap into yet. I just always had a huge desire to make my own version, my own D-Day and tell inspirational stories of that day. And just the heroism that took place and the sacrifice and the love, you know, as you can see, there's there's themes with my stories. So yeah, I would love to make a Ward World 2 D-Day uh, film in the future, hopefully. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Am I ready to lose everything? Am I ready to die?